Girl Scouts. Betsy Nichols here, Program Specialist for the Girl Scouts of Minnesota and Wisconsin Lakes and Pines, returning to you from Duluth, Minnesota. This video is part three of four for the Junior Think Like an Engineer journey. Today I will be guiding you through the third design challenge, but first let's get started with the Girl Scout Promise and the Girl Scout Law. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Great. So today's challenge is called Seismic Shakeup. Um, we are challenged to make a structure that can withstand an earthquake, uh, an earthquake's shaking. So seismic means something that is caused by the Earth's vibrations. It can be caused by nature, like an earthquake, or something artificial, like how the ground vibrates when an airplane takes off. Hundreds of millions of people live in places around the world where earthquakes are common. Most of the destruction that earthquake causes is the result of collapsing structures like skyscrapers, hospitals, and bridges. That's why earthquake engineering is so important. By designing buildings and other structures that can withstand violent shaking of an earthquake, engineers save lives. So, to build our structures to withstand an earthquake, there are a few things that we need to round up. We are looking for 20 to 30 wooden or plastic coffee stirrers, a quarter pound of modeling clay, a manila file folder, or eight and a half by 11 piece of cardboard, a ruler to measure the height of our structure, and pencils and paper. Now we will also be making a um, table to shake and test our structures. So if you can also round up two pieces of sturdy cardboard, two thick rubber bands, two tennis or rubber balls, two large binder clips, a ruler or paint stirrer for the handle, and masking tape. That is what we will need for our shake table. So I am going to take a moment to see what I can find around my home. Um, I know that I do not have coffee stirs. I know that I don't have um, modeling clay. So I am going to have to make quite a few substitutions um, and that's okay. I'm still confident that I'm going to be able to pull this off. Um, I also don't have tennis balls for the shake table, so I'm either going to improvise my own shake table or um, I might see if there's a way I can do this um, without making the shake table at all. I'll have to find out. Uh, so I'm going to round up my supplies and see what I can find. I am back with my supplies, so I'm going to first go through what I have for my structure. I didn't have any coffee stirs around my home, so I swapped those out with markers and colored pencils. I also don't have any modeling clay, so I am using tape as an adhesive device. I don't have manila folders, so I have some cardboard. And then I do have my ruler as well as pens and pencils and paper and some scissors. So before I get started with um, building my structure, I am going to go over the shake table concept. So the shake table is essentially something that you're going to build, uh, that you're going to place your structure on top of, and then we're going to shake it to see if your structure would hold up against an earthquake. So this is what I threw together. Essentially, what we're looking for is two sturdy pieces of cardboard. I have foam and then we are wanting to place two tennis balls um, in between the two pieces of cardboard. 
and then secure the whole thing with rubber bands. So um, I don't have tennis balls, I don't have ping pong balls. Um, so what I tried substituting in was jars of spices and I'll show you. But essentially when you are testing your structure, you want to be able to shake the shake table back and forth and it's going to, it's supposed to, the top piece is supposed to kind of freely move back and forth. Um, so this is what I have. I'll show you what I have inside. So I put two spice containers and so it was working fine without the rubber bands. So you see it's kind of, there we go, it's kind of moving back and forth. Now the advantage to having like tennis balls or ping pong balls is not only would the top part roll back and forth, it would also go side to side, it could go diagonally, it could go in all sorts of different directions. So if that is something that you have available to you, um, absolutely try to do it. Um, I will try my structure on both the shake table and then I'll probably just hold it on a piece of cardboard as well, shake it around and see how it does. Um, so. That is how we are going to test our structures. Next, we need to build our structures. Um, and the one requirement is we want our structures to be six inches tall. So we're going to try to do that. Um, if possible, build your structure on a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard that you could then easily attach or clamp onto your shake table to move it back and forth. There's your tip. So I am going to start building. Why don't you do the same? And I will be right back with my prototype. I am back with my finished prototype. So I have my ruler here. This rubber band is sitting at six inches. Here is my finished prototype. And it looks like it is taller than six inches. So that's good. Um, I went with a somewhat trapezoidal design for my building. So it has rectangular sides. Well, it has two rectangular sides and then two um, trapezoid si sides because I really like the strength that um, triangles uh, bring to uh, structures. So I put a little triangle element in there, um, but it's still has four edges, so that is a trapezoid. So this is, again, my improvised shake table. So if I put it on here, shake it back and forth, shake it back and forth, looks like it's doing okay. And then if I take it off, give it a really, really giant shake, it's also okay. Um, so there you have it. This is my um, prototype. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Hopefully um, you are happy with how yours turned out as well. And if it didn't um, hold up to tests, then maybe you need to go back and make some modifications and that's okay because that's what being an engineer is all about. Um, but I just wanna thank you so much for joining me today. This was our last design challenge. So if you just stop right here, you will have done what you need to do to earn the Think Like an Engineer badge. But if you turn, tune in with me next week, we will be talking about how we can turn what we have worked on these past three weeks and transform that into a take action project to help out your community. Um, so then you can get that uh, take action patch to go along with your Think Like an Engineer badge. Um, but I thank you so much for joining me today. I will wrap things up with make new friends and a friendship circle. So sing it with me. Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other's gold. A circle is round. It has no end. That's how long I want to be your friend. Bye Girl Scouts.